Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at least on my review of As You Like It by William Shakespeare. So this is the beautiful uh, Folio Society edition. Uh, so as you can see here, it's illustrated. Um, it's really beautifully laid out as well. And um, introduction by Peter Brook, decor and costumes by Salvador Dali. Um, so I'm going to go through, there's no blurb on this or anything, but it's a Shakespeare play, so you know. I'm going to go through and uh, read some of my fags as I go along, and then at the end I'll share my overall thoughts and ratings. So, uh, I want to read the start of the introduction. So he says, I imagine someone picking up this edition of As You Like It. He reads the words Folio Society. Folio, the word conjures up ancient manuscripts, echoes of scholarly discussion, the study of the methods of the Elizabethan theatre, of Shakespeare played in Shakespeare's way. He opens the book. There are designs by Salvador Dali, the notorious surrealist, one who is famous for his intimate knowledge of the anatomy of spiders, but not for his interest in the structure of the 16th century playhouse. What can he and Shakespeare have in common? So he has designed a production of As You Like It. This may give our imaginary person quite a surprise. How right, he may explain, or even how wrong. If he, is an if he is an innocent abroad in the world of the theatre, he may wonder whether such extremes as Dali and a Shakespeare folio can ever meet. How how should one stage as you like it, he may wonder, as we imagine Shakespeare did in his time, or as we imagine Shakespeare would do it in ours. In this age of chaos, no chaos is greater than the theory of Shakespeare production, if one can use the word theory to cover the jumble of styles and manners that are inflicted on the plays. In every country they are performed in a different way. I've heard Shakespeare's characters quote Voltaire. I've seen a Cleopatra flash a diamond bracelet and say of Enobarbus, ah, quel numero. The, plant, the plays are done in arenas or reconstructions of the Elizabethan stage. I have myself been responsible for staging one play in the manner of a painter who lived a hundred years after Shakespeare died, and another as though it was part of a newsreel in the Middle Ages. And he says here, this was also quite interesting, he says, Broadly speaking, the whole of the world's theatre falls into two vast categories. There is the high theatre, covering the formal, the ritual, the conventional, the poetic, the tragic, and there is the low theatre, covering the natural, the real, the conversational, the literal, and the comic. Each of these calls for a totally different approach from the producer. In fact, he must possess two styles to which everything he does can be referred. I don't really have a huge amount to say about this play, but there were a few things I highlighted. I wanted to show you this image here. That's looking much more Salvador Dali. We have the famous All the World's a Stage um, soliloquy by Jacques, and I'm going to read that out to you. Um, I didn't realise it was in this place, so it was quite a nice little surprise to have it. And also, I think it does a good job of actually talking about the sort of ages of man, you know? So he says, All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his act being seven ages. At first the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. Then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths, and bearded like the pard, jealous in honour, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, in fair round belly, with good cap on lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise sores and modern instances, and so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. His youthful, his youthful hose well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank, and his big manly voice t turning again toward childish treble pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all, that ends this strange eventful history. His second, childless, his second childishness and mere oblivion, sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. I quite like this little bit here as well, conversation between Rosalind and Orlando. So Rosalind says, There is none of my uncle's marks upon you. He taught me how to know a man in love, in which cage of rushes I am sure you are not prisoner. What were his marks? A lean cheek, which you have not. A blue eye and sunken, which you have not. An unquestionable spirit, which you have not. A beard neglected, which you have not. But I pardon you for that, for simply your having in beard is a younger brother's revenue. Then your hose should be ungartered, your bonnet unbanded, your sleeve unbuttoned, your shoe untied, and everything about you demonstrating a careless desolation. But you are no such man. You are rather point device in your accoutrements, as loving yourself than seeming the lover of any other. Then we get this really cool illustration as well. So overall, as you can tell, I was actually probably more interested in Salvador Dali's illustrations than in the play itself. Um, but I did enjoy it reasonably well. I'd give it like a 3.5 out of 5. I don't think it particularly stands out amongst uh, Shakespeare's plays. Although it was interesting to read in the introduction that they were talking about. It's kind of one of the easiest ones to interpret because it's sort of... 
I guess the others you have to be more realistic. So things like Julius Caesar, for example, you've got your Roman soldiers and all this stuff. So it's kind of more grounded in history, whereas this is sort of almost more whimsical. Uh, so yeah, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. It was all right. So there you have it, that's what I thought of As You Like It by William Shakespeare. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.